Hello people, and welcome back to part 23 of the Noob's Guide to City Skylines. Hope you're having a wonderful day. Thanks so much indeed for all support last week when we built our amusement park. If you'd like to come and see this uh, get constructed and how we worked with tighter spaces and a little bit of a themed haunted house asset, uh, then please do come and check out last week's episode. I had a really nice time working with yet another park area. Now there is one more park area to go, which is the Nature Reserve, which we haven't covered yet, and this will probably fill this space here, uh, but we're not going to be doing that today. What I would like to talk to you about today is how we can change this kind of boring regular four, or indeed sometimes six lane road, into something a little bit more curated, a little bit more personal to your city. We're going to work with some new road snappings today, some new sort of uh, symmetry ideas alongside, again, more specific zoning, uh, to bring a little more thought and design into our main road networks, connecting people back and to from different parts of the cities. And I think we've got some nice ideas in store for what we're going to do with this road and indeed public transport integration today. So let's talk about how we can beautify our main arterial roads in city skyline, shall we? So throughout the Noob's Guide now, we've been drawing in road network frames, either as there to satisfy a residential or commercial demand as and when we run into it. But now what I'd like to do is do something a little bit different with that idea. So we're going to start with this very base bottom road over here, right? This is one that just feeds off of a roundabout for us. If you're following along with the Noob's Guide, you might have this in already, or indeed somewhere else in your city you might just have this. And you're bored of just drawing in four lane roads now, okay? So I also know I'm going to want a little bit more room over, the, over here. So I'm going to keep the game paused at the minute so the public transport line doesn't try and continue to flow. And then at the end of this four lane road now, I'm just going to draw out 10 units either side because I want uh, the ability to snap into the grid on this side over here. Okay. So through the middle of my sort of spruced up arterial network, I'm going to be placing in a tram track. Okay, and we can come off of the road guideline, but the grid snap will remain the same. And I'm wanting to have this out here. Okay, and I'm just going to draw a nice big straight section down for 20 units for right now. So you could also use monorail for this as well if you wanted to, um, although the stops will be fairly harder to integrate, but you can still get away with it. Monorail will be fine. Okay, so then I'm going to grab a one-way two-lane road. So we're going to be splitting the four lanes of the four-lane road into two separate one-way systems either side of the tram line. The space that I'm looking to leave between the tram line and the road is exactly one tile, okay? So it's really important here that we're snapping into grid and road guideline markings when we're aligning these two networks together. See the exact same thing come over here. That time it will snap to a road guideline. So we can now see the importance of how this is beginning to look, right? Do also need to remember that we do have another tram line here that's going to flow down. This will be the start of the loop, uh, essentially. So we'll come off of the road guideline here. And again, I can snap into the grid. And then we can just simply feed this one uh, back into its existing network with a curve road tool and a road guideline. And there we go. And then also reinstate the connection uh, over this side for which this can be broken now. And then again, a touch of road guideline with a little bit of curve tool will give us a nice sensible curve back in there. Okay, fantastic. So, let's uh, redraw that road back in. And then we'll grab our one-way roads. So I'm going to alternate how and where the trees appear here, and actually in hindsight I'm actually going to make them all grass, and then we'll decide uh, exactly which sections will become uh, tram road. So, we can now just come onto a freeform tool, and snap it into the road guideline here. We can create a simple connection. Now, sometimes with the vanilla game, and when we bring in the tram node directly into this space here, it can cause a little bit of tearing. If that irritates you, once you start to do this with a node, if you play with a node controller, this is easily fixable, but we're not today. Um, then you can just bring it straight across the road like that indeed, rather than into the junction. So I'll show a couple of examples of how this can get messed up, but otherwise we should be okay. All right, and then we can let the tram loop complete its loop here, and then it can come back down and then out into the suburb. So, quite cute designs. Let's change our uh, directions up, of course. Okay, so much more important looking junction now, isn't it? You know, it's a lot more interesting than just another sort of boring junction on a main road like this. You know, things are starting to become a little bit more interesting, but a little bit more personalized to your designs. Okay, so we are on terrain here, you know, but this is a big chunk of where we sloped out. So why don't we uh, come ahead and just double check that the slope is still as efficient as it can be. We're going to right click with the slope tool where our road networks end. 
Then we're going to want to slope it up uh, from this direction here. So it's just going to take a little bit of the harshness out of that terrain there. There we go. Just slope it all out for us. That's what we're after today. So now we're still playing with heights here. We're still playing with gradients, but we're preparing the gradient before. You know, things we've covered before now. And then let's also give ourselves a larger forest brush. Just so we're not sort of including any of the map detailing. This will be very heavily detailed by ourselves today. So now what I'd like to do is prepare the connection at the bottom end, for which this road will now need to break. And then we can just simply uh, redraw in uh, those measurements now. So let's come in with a uh, you know 20. We'll then switch to a tram road, which again is snapped into a one tile space away from that road. And then again, the next one is going to be in the one tile space to that side as well, which gives us the same pattern down here now, okay? Wonderful. Why don't we use a content creator road? Let's go for perhaps the uh, European six lane stone bridge. And again, we can snap to a road guideline here and just prepare ourselves a, a very temporary connection, which we can actually maybe come down a touch further, I think, than that actually. Let's maybe go for that one there. Okay, and then we'll use that curve tool with the road guideline, connect it into there, and then this can go off and over there into whatever sits over this side, probably the ore quarry there, maybe a little sort of industrial side entrance for the quarry eventually, okay? And then same process here now again too, let's come back into those uh, one-way two-unit roads and just prepare all our measurements to meet up. And again, it's up to you now whether or not you would like to uh, try and do the sort of freeform snap tool into the same node. Again, it can be a touch of jank in the vanilla game. This is what I'm talking about right here, okay? So if you have the node controller mod on the PC, um, this will entirely fix this problem for you, and you can do some very nice things with the node as well. So if you want to do that, you can, and then continue to feed your tram light out, and that's actually fixed the problem for me. It didn't do that in my testing, <laughs> so that's fine. Again, the alternative here is to... Uh, cut the tram line off earlier out of the system and then feed it off that way But I think if this is working for me, then I'm gonna do this way Let's go ahead and get these two systems hooked together and then we can start having a look at some detailing and asset placement and getting the trams flowing uh, through this really quite cute network as well So I will review the tram lines for those that are interested. So it's now just a sort of omnidirectional tram line. Okay, we have one white and one black that are just flowing in the opposite direction to each other. And eventually, as we expand down this side of the map, we can bring these tram lines down to converge with a two internal train lines and an intercity train line plus the airport. Because, of course, this, um, this train line actually goes to the airport now. So uh, that's going to be quite fun eventually, okay? But always nice to pre-plan people with transport networks. Okay. Fantastic. So here we go. This is the desired idea. All right. So of course at the minute everyone that is on this road is enclosed within a one-way loop. They can't really get off of it. So we're going to help change that. So what we're about to do here is just draw in a simple road across, across again and then out the other side into whatever road network sits over this side. So usually in City Skylines this is a bad idea to do. It's never great to cluster this many nodes together. You can do it occasionally on the right road network, just don't be doing it all the time very close because then you will start to run into traffic issues. But for the time being for us, it's just going to be a little way for people to cross back into across the one-way system and then also create some pedestrian crossings uh, in here for us as well. Okay, fantastic. Let's go ahead and find a spot for another one. We'll have one uh, straight through the middle here. We could actually stagger them and have them uh, come further down off of this way as well. We'll draw one in there for right now. Let's also do 
uh, another one. We could also do something quite fun here with the tram road, or we could keep it separate and then do some nice curvature up into this space over here as well if we wanted to. Which I think is what we'll do, because this will give us a little layer of depth against it and some detailed opportunities here as we start to play with much more intricate designed road networks now. You now you compare this sort of stuff to what we were doing you know, right at the start of the city, and this is really basic now compared to you know, now we know how to use curve tools and freeform angles, road guidelines, snaps, and all these little techniques that we picked up over the last 23 episodes uh, can now continually be brought into, you know, design things like this. It's all very interesting. See that where the slope isn't quite as friendly to us? That just wants a quick redraw. Okay, it's going to get rid of a little bit of that nastiness for us. And then again, we just want this to continue through. And then again, that will hook into whatever lies over here. So, what I would like to do, uh, where the tram stops are, indeed, if we can identify them. Now, let's see if we can move you slightly further back into the middle of this section. Yes, we can. And then you, will you come slightly further this way? Yes, I think we'll stagger these ones. All right, that's going to be quite a nice time. And then these can also remain the same as well. So, let's carry on talking about sort of detailing up a road network. So, on this main stretch here, why don't we upgrade the sections of the road into the version with trees? And of course, thanks to the airport update, we now have the uh, capacity to upgrade these into something else. I'm thinking perhaps a touch of Eastern Cottonwood. Alright? I think that's going to be quite nice, isn't it? But of course, the detailing isn't finished yet. Let's come in with a vanilla pathway. So, if you're wanting to use uh, the tram lines here, also the park life paths or the campus paths and um, you do need a little bit more room than one tile to go from left to right so you can try and factor that in if you want to you can also line the path with or the road with the pathway but they won't actually register as connections onto the tram because they don't have that angle on them but it can be appreciated you can also do your uh, tree pattern in this space as well if you wanted to uh, rather than on the road again you might want to leave yourself three tiles between the tram and the uh, roads to do this pattern, but I'll just run over some initial templates. Live oaks are probably too leafy. Yeah, the trams are sort of driving through the leaves, but you can start to come up with some really dense sort of treed road networks here, okay? You can sort of get an impression of possibilities that are available. Um, this is too spicy for me, but if it's up your alley, then we've covered it. What I would like to do is actually come off all of our snapping with just a regular vanilla path. You can also use gravel paths for this as well if you want. Again, it's personal preference if you're in a slightly more country area. Maybe you'll prefer the gravel pathways. Okay, so just a simple vanilla pathway with no snapping on. In these small spaces are going to allow us to connect people uh, on and off the tram network. Um, zoo pathway, or sorry, zoo fencing. Um, works really nicely for highlighting a tram stop. This is a an old school bit of Imperator detailing uh, for those that are a fan of the German engineer. And, uh, you can find some really truly wonderful vanilla designs on Imperator's channel. Um, if you haven't checked him out then then please do consider it. Okay, so we'll repeat this measurement here as well. It was 50. So we'll bring it it's basically against the road here, isn't it? Yeah, so we'll do it like that one. Let's go for 50 there. And then bring it down on the angle snap. And then we can just see what this is going to achieve now. It's just going to be a nice little framing for the tram stop, isn't it? Of course, don't have to use zoo fence. Don't even have to use fence. And if you want, maybe you can use bushes for this. Well, I will be using bushes as well, though. Consider some of your park life tiles. Perhaps uh, a little bit of zoo tileage uh, would be welcome in this space, of course, if you're playing without the prop line tool, uh, like we are, which is an enormous quality of life mod. Uh, then you can just manually place these. It'll just take you a little bit longer. But otherwise, we can place in... Uh, some zoo tileage to cover the grass now. Don't worry about those little fractured spaces. We'll fill those in in a second as well. Okay, so it's all about just being slow and sort of taking your time uh, to sort of come up with little designs like this. Makes a world of difference to your city. And I often find as well, because I'm in the middle of actually writing the 50k uh, subscriber special at the minute, which will hopefully be coming up you know, as soon as we hit 50k subscribers, basically. There's one thing that I've sort of picked up on, on that retrospective, is that it's slow down, you know, take time. You end up spending a lot more time with your cities as a result. 
each little area becomes a lot more personalized than just sticking in yet another block of zoning somewhere. Okay, and then maybe a couple of little benches in here as well, if you wanted to. And this is where your own creativity comes into it. Now, if you do have trams in your own city, you know, the next time you go past a stop, just have a look. What exactly is next to that stop? Is there seating? Is there perhaps a little cafe for commuters that are there in the early morning to perhaps grab uh, a croissant? You might come into your uh, prop menu as well over here, okay? That's a couple of little sort of kiosk things that might work quite nicely here. Um, and don't be afraid as well to get into actual part props alongside these if you're going to go with uh, a slightly wider angle. Then, you know, use part restrooms around these info booths as ticket offices. You know, you, you can all you sort of use your imagination to really flesh out these sorts of designs around a road network now. And hope you can see, you know, just how much more interesting is this now. You know, we started with a regular boring, just four lane road like this. Okay, maybe we have these everywhere in our cities, but just spending a little bit more time sort of curating and crafting a road network around a public transport line and deciding how patterns appear around that is uh, tremendously helpful indeed. Uh, let's actually start getting some zoning in. So of course, all of our zoning rules still apply here. Um, I'm going to be very uh, careful about what assets I want as part of this tram stop. So a couple of 4x4 four four or 4 deep uh, commercial zoning spaces are going to be uh, fine by me. I'm happy to have these in here and we've also got a touch of residential demand as well. So I'll let this fill out up this space. Okay, and then we'll wait for something to grow, and then we'll get some power in, and then we can start to have a look at some unique building placements along here as well, alongside some of the little bits and pieces that we're quite fond of. So, of course, be selective of what assets are allowed to be here, as always. No awful vanilla ones, it will very much break the vibe. So, we'll see what we look like in a second. Vanilla assets have been chosen, as to historicalise as to what we want them to be. And just so happens, potluck, I happen to have generated a bunch of assets with car parking out the front, um, which is very much helping the sort of commercial high street aesthetic here, isn't it? Okay, but there's people waiting for the tram lines now, which is great. Okay, got people hanging around, waiting to the public transport. That's always a good thing, isn't it? So, of course, you could also integrate Metro into this as well if you want. I just don't happen to have a Metro line over here. and probably won't in this half of the city. Um, a lot of the stuff on this side will be serviced by train eventually. So, Metro is also welcome here. And now consider the placement of sort of your smaller assets, right? Stuff like your major parks, you know, where do you want these to sit? Um, your favourite corner assets are also more than welcome within this space, 100%. Uh, stuff like the post office, you know, we've discussed our favourite corner assets before. This is going to sit really nicely on the corner and help add into the vibe that's been generated over this side. And, you know, it's a suburban expansion, so don't forget things like the medical centre, again, which is another really nice corner unit. So, all these little ideas can be pieced together to create a much more dynamic looking high street. Have a little look at some high density residential zone in there. Definitely happy for this to be uh, along here in most places. And we'll also expand the park asset out because of course this is one that can be expanded. And we're going to carry on bringing in all the walkability in the world into the area. There's one more design I want to bring into the middle and again it's up to you as to whether or not you want to integrate it going to grab a vanilla cycling path from the After Dark DLC and let's just go for let's just do a little small example over here okay so if you're not planning to do anything within these spaces of course this can be tree detailing or bush detailing and indeed you would like a little bit of extra network then consider the inclusion uh, of some one tier elevated uh, bike pathways okay, they work really nicely as just sort of extra network. I'm a huge fan of just having them slightly elevated as opposed to on the ground. Because of course on the ground they kind of look a little bit bad. Um, they're much nicer on a single elevation. Okay, so you can bring some cycle highway in if you want. And then indeed actually upgrade the roads that come off of this into cycling. And that's only going to further encourage people to cycle. So why don't we do that on this one here. In fact, we'll bring this cycle network uh, right up into where the buses are stopping and then outside of the amusement park and then I'll also feed this back through the suburb over this way and then this can just come back down over this side and then back into the main road and possibly through here as well 
hospital. So we can now start to establish a new cycle network in this part of the city. I would probably say it's a little bit too much to double up a design like this, but if you want to, you can. But what I'd probably do uh, at this point is now do uh, some manual tree detailing, uh, almost always with something from uh, the content creator trees, just because they're, like, infinitely better than the vanilla ones. Okay. Oh, so I'm happy for some uh, sort of tower blocks to be located over here. Maybe not two of them, though. Two is a little bit too dominant. Right. And there you go. So, you know, we're not just zoning against a four-lane road anymore. We're creating a little network to accommodate some new themes and ideas and designs that we have uh, to play with. Unique buildings are also more than welcome here as well. We've got a bunch of the ones uh, left over from the Japanese content creator pack. It fits. We sit, right? That's perfect. I can't really deny that one. So, we've got a unique building in here as well. That's only going to help draw more people into the network and indeed more people... Uh, on your public transport lines. And, you know, don't zone up the entire thing either. You know, leave a little bit of breathing room for traffic to flow in and out. You can see how the traffic's going to handle these sorts of new one-way flow systems now. Okay, see what happens at the top of the junction. They're going to stop at the light. I probably would leave the light here, actually, and um, just so it can help stagger the trams coming through. But it seems to be uh, flowing nicely now. It's just really fun, isn't it? So we see if we get a little first-person tour as we come down uh, into this new high street and see what we think. Hopefully he is going to actually pass through it. No thoughtful placement of assets is coming into play now, isn't it? Really is. Just that one single tower block is making a really nice difference to the build. You know, thoughtful placement of uh, vanilla uh, zoning assets makes a huge difference. There we go, even though we are glitched into the back of a lorry, we can still appreciate uh, the aesthetic. There we go. Okay. Wonderful news. Although, I have just realised this is a two-way road. It is a two-way road, isn't it? You idiot egg. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes, they are. Oh, my God. <gasps> wonder how many people were screaming at me about that. Yes, make sure that this does flow with the one-way network. My apologies, everyone. That was probably... Good few comments in the episode about that. <laughs> My apologies. Yes, so ensure that indeed everyone is within a one-way system, okay? Keep it one way. Very nice. Let's make some stuff historical that we like over here. Uh, this should all be okay. So, let's head over to how the tram line now splits off of this system. Essentially in this sort of space over here, right? Um, this is going to be a nice little spot for some walkability and indeed some overgrowth if we want to. We've gone quite heavy in commercial down here. But, you know, indeed, if you want to bring high density commercial into this space as well, you can, of course, just be wary of the extra noise pollution that that brings. Also, on a related note, uh, modern city centre assets, the same things we used um, in the downtown all the way over here, sort of that pass through this main road. Um, these would work really nicely in a design like this as well having the modern city sent and stuff against a network like this, but it's a little bit too high density vibes for this part of the map for me, but if you want to do it, you can. So, because I'm playing with layers in Diamond Coast, there is an awful lot of sort of heights popping and doing different things over here. Let's have a little bit of discussion about a overgrown area of a network like this. Okay, let's see what we can do. So, let's come into one of our pathways, and I think I'm going to use um, probably something quite simple. I think it's the... Technology campus that has the almost teal trim on it, doesn't it? Yes, this is the path that I want. Let's go for that one then. And we will come into a grid, whilst the grid is sort of friendly to us here. Okay, and then what would like to happen is to uh, possibly bring out a path from here. We also want to be snapping to road length as well, and then come um, out of the grid. Actually, well, the grid's going to hurt us here, isn't it? Yes, it is, because the road isn't quite perfectly aligned. That's fine. We'll manually align it ourselves then. So I'm going to find a nice little elevated layer. And then we can come off of road length as we align pillars at either side of the road network. That's going to be fine for me. Let's bring this down now. And then what we'll do is come onto a road length and a curve tool. Do a little five increments. We'll come down by two. And then we'll do another five. And we'll keep it there, and then we can just drop uh, straight back down with no road length back into the earth, and then we can have it like that. 
Okay, so that's going to give some interconnectivity for people that aren't quite perhaps near a pedestrian crossing, but do indeed want to get back up to that top layer, then they can now. Let's return to the idea of the uh, single elevated uh, cycle highway. So this is going to work quite nicely with this design, um, having different layers flow around here now. Okay, so why don't we uh, again leave two tiles of elevation, and then we'll come back up. Uh, it's just simple grid snapping now. Okay, we can come back into our curve tools as we approach the curve on this particular section of road. It can be a little bit uh, finicky with its snapping, but you can get it to work the majority of the time. Uh, indeed, if it is being too much of a ball ache, uh, then just come off of your grid snap and uh, manually align this. It's actually probably easier for me to do it here. Yeah, let's just do it in sort of shorter bursts. Again, we'll save two spaces right at the end for which we can descend uh, back down into it. You can also do the opposite here. You can elevate it over the junction if you like, but I'm just going to use it essentially as on and off points for a quick little cycle uh, down this main road. Uh, but you, again, you can alternate it, you know, maybe have one side that does drop down at every junction and maybe a higher network that skips every two junctions. So almost like an express cycle lane, you know, all these different ideas, all these variations of designs like this can be brought in to make everyone's build unique. So cool, that's going to give us some walkability. I'm going to be pretty happy with that, I think. Let's now come into a little bit more sort of overgrown design around a road network. Okay, let's come in with some uh, vanilla dirt path, shall we? Let's come ahead and grab some uh, nature as a fence spice. I'm just going to do little nuances of freeform uh, curvature with this pathway. And this is a, an old firm favourite of Overcharged Egg, isn't it? The nature reserve fencing kind of staggered and shattered on a corner. And then we can, again, come away from that theme and perhaps start to generate uh, some more sort of solid shapes for it. Okay, so let's do this one in this space here. We'll just totally encompass this little green hill that we've got. Give it a healthy dose of overgrowth. And then, of course, find your happier trees that you've been using in your map up until this point. For me, it's kind of this mixed, kind of temperate, tropical vibe using the content creator palms. Uh, little pops of colour are welcome as well, you know. Let's not everything sort of fall under the same monotone brush. Let's bring in some of the vanilla ones as well, especially the palm plants. And now you can just craft these happy little gardens to your, your own specifications, your own desires, perhaps a couple of uh, little rocks here as well, just to add a little pop of grey into what's turning into a sea of green. That can really help us just uh, add a nice, cute, tailored rock garden into a space that's relatively unfriendly for zoning and also going to serve as a really nice point of decoration around our tram line here alongside the road network that now sort of curves around it and then we can just see now take this as your spice sample for the episode okay you can notice the growth in the background we've got trams moving around now this is so much more interesting than just a regular four lane road isn't it we can do so much more with this design and um, it's really nice I love doing stuff like this so hopefully margin to pick up a couple of different ideas as to how you can variate your uh, road networks, which I think for the vast majority of us, we all have our own style of building, and piecing together uniques, downtowns, etc. But I think road networks, at least for me, especially when I was new to the game, for those that are following this guide as a noob, um, they can be some of the more tricky things to piece together and actually make it look good as well. So hopefully this episode is going to help with that. So we'll also discuss uh, a little bit further suburban tramline detail and again, sort of in the theme of looking at new and interesting road networks. Let's see what we can do here. So I know that this space here, as we mentioned at the start of the episode, will eventually become a level five nature reserve once we come around to build that. But there's a tram line here that now just flows as a lone tram line. It's not tramped with road, but it's just kind of a little bit naked, isn't it? If you like naked tram lines aren't something that we really want in the city. So let's draw out a new suburban frame. We're going to come to this road guideline here. I think I'm happy with that. I might want to redraw this one ever so slightly just to reinstate that zone in. And then what I'd like to do is bring in perhaps a more natural looking pathway. Uh, maybe as we start to transition into nature reserve eventually, we can prepare um, a little bit of nature reserve pathway to save this function. Looks like yeah, the grid snap is going to mess with us here. Let's come off of that. There we go. So let's run this parallel with the tram. We're going to throw it all the way down here. Let's go for 
a left to right orientation instead. I'm going to come out of the grid and then also off of the road guideline. And we'll just draw this in as close as we can get it. There we go. So that's just going to give me the lights on the right hand side of the pathway. Very small detail, but you can bother with it if you like. Okay, and then I'm going to have this one through here. I'm happy with that, I think. Go ahead and grab a little bit of nature as a fence in. I think I'm actually go for something that's a little bit more official. Perhaps a touch farm would be uh, welcome here. All right. I do you realize that a touch of farm, almost like the one in Avaria, sounds like a, a regional detective drama set in the countryside, doesn't it? So a little bit of farm fencing around the edge here. So this will eventually be the border for our nature reserve fencing, right? Or our nature reserve, rather. It's not a border for more fencing, although, again, that's probably a big overcharged egg thing, isn't it? To give a fence border to some fencing, I think. <laughs> All right. Cool. So now I just want some low-density res sat here. Hey, nothing too special. Just a nice big uh, four-deep zoning of it. And I think if we go for a repeatable tree pattern again, we'll pick something perhaps with a little bit more leafage, maybe uh, some live oaks. Although not that close together, though. Let's use our prop line tool. We're going to round up to probably 20 units, maybe 25. 25 is good. Okay, and then from one corner to the other, we'll bring this in now, and then just allow it to sit within the spaces where it can, and maybe manually place one on the end there as well. Let's also do a little bit more commercial zone in here. And then what they'll do is now, just by planning in the tiling against an existing road network frame, and um, a path boundary between that is just going to allow you to create much more integrated road public transport networks. I hope that makes sense. It probably doesn't. But you know, that's the spy sample. It's not just a tram line with roads. It's, or whatever it's called, you know, the, the road that has trams on it. This one, basically. You know, we're doing something much more interesting with our tram designs now. Um, if you are playing very heavily modded, or at least to the point where you have to worry about hitting the node count, doing integrate designs like this, you're essentially tripling up the nodes, right? So where it was just one road before, we now have three networks that are eating up those node counts. So do be careful if you're one of those that has to worry about the node count being a problem. But I should be okay for the most part. There's already some cyclists picking up this little path now, isn't there? There we go. That is what we want to see. Nice little busy high street. Uh, with plenty of people walking as well, which is interesting. Looks like some tourists are coming to the Japanese cafe. You can tell they're tourists because they're so colourful. Alright. Wonderful news. Let's all come in together. This is starting to grow up now. And hopefully now you can see the point of crafting. Much more carefully crafted suburb. You know, we've not done mass amounts of expansion today, but we've just spent a little bit more time going a little bit slower and creating exactly how the network flows through an area. However, guys, this does feel like a wonderful place for a detailed time lapse. We have a bunch of work to do, uh, including more specific zoning along the main road, but again, not everywhere. You know, that there's lots of zoning means that people are going to stop and start, and with a big connection like this up to the highway eventually, um, it's not so totally advisable, so sparing zoning where needed. Yeah, I'm also going to play with the possibility of doing what we did, or what we mentioned with this cycle highway, to have it flow over the junction, rather than just having it sort of stop at every junction. We'll play with some ideas with that. A lot more overgrowth detail as well, and also try and fill out the rest of this preset suburban frame uh, with, indeed, some more residential zoning. So carry on crawling towards at that 70k population, or 75k population even, uh, to get the next tile. Then lots more detail in these spaces, uh, detail all of the tram stops that are on uh, this main one-way uh, sort of contraflow network. So they're a little bit more important and nice looking like this. And then all the little bits and pieces, some overgrowth around here, uh, some preparation with the fence in for uh, the eventual nature reserve build. And indeed, just help uh, this new sort of very carefully designed uh, road network frame and now fit into new yoke a little bit easier. So as always, we'll be right back.
Okay guys, so let's have a detailing review, shall we? Uh, open at the mouth of the kind of uh, new reconfigured network today. A bunch of repeated bush patterns alongside a little micro district to hold a touch of office zone in, for which my building has now hit the desired level, yes please. And a little bit of uh, after dark as well, just to bring in a touch of nightlife here. Uh, this looks really nice at night as well, of course, with all the after dark lights. I have wrapped the entire cycle network around the edge of what will eventually be the National Park uh, with a couple of exits on and off near to the internal train station, of course, which links with Intercity. So again, it's more kind of pre-planned public transport convergence. Uh, more variations of flower and zoo fence designs in and around the tram stops. And again, you know, there's endless combinations and possibilities with this sort of stuff. It's all kind of really up to your own configuration. Also brought in a little dirt road connection between the main road and the tram, almost like it's maybe some sort of like maintenance thing for trams so vehicles can get on and off it quite quickly. And it also provides a pedestrian crossing as well, which you can see is getting some nice use now. Brought in some nice green belt patterns in and around the road network with uh, some expanded vanilla parks and selective commercial zonings. Again, things that we've covered before. Uh, there's repeated tree patterns running alongside some of the tram line as well. Again, you know, it's not the same everywhere as we move into different blocks of it. It does change up. And then alongside some more sort of overgrown detail in here and some generic sort of simple vanilla park designs uh, in and around the suburb with some park life assets. Further selective commercial zoning alongside an elementary school just to hit some demand but as we build the suburb out this side that will of course be factored into an elementary school build. And again lots more trees and designs around the tram stops here which we looked at during the episode. And then I did bring in a little section of elevated zoo path almost as though it is kind of decoration within itself rather than just a pathway it's a little bit eccentric but you can get on board with it and it does work quite nicely against one side of a tram line as well and then there's been a touch more high density residential been allowed to grow around this park asset as well which again you can just appreciate now right just selecting what assets are allowed to be part of a build like this and then making them historical uh, once you're happy with them it really helps pay off into the build then also, not every tram stop has to be kind of super detailed and eccentric, you know. Sometimes a repeated tree pattern uh, with some bushes either side of a dirt path is more than enough. And then we also fractured uh, the cycle highway over here as well, so people can get uh, on and off and also access this tram stop over here as well. well. Otherwise, guys, that is going to do it for today. I would like to thank you all so much for watching. If you have enjoyed the episode, likes, comments, and shares below really do help me out. Let's like help support the work, throw links down to merchandise, Patreon, and Instant Gaming below. Instant Gaming link is certainly worth a look. And equally as much if you haven't enjoyed it, then of course leave me a dislike as well. Hopefully today we've really kind of focused in on how we can take a simple, boring, regular four-lane road that would just connect two pre-existing road frames together into something much more personalised, something much more customised, and of course there is endless combinations of this. You can take the one-way systems out into kind of a curvature, almost bowl shape, leave the tram line or perhaps a monorail going through the middle then have two big park areas either side of it. There really is just so many ideas and possibilities and variations of thinking like this with your road networks. And it's not been that much of a large expansion, you know. We've only kind of redrawn in a four-lane road technically here today, but by giving a little bit more care and attention to how that actually looks, I hope you can see the final product paying off here today. Please do hang around for some cinematics. This place works really nicely at night time as it sits within the rest of New Bioke, especially with the ever-growing skyline behind it. Uh, the city's getting quite large now, and uh, it's still looking uh, really nice. I'm super happy with it, and I'm glad you're all enjoying it. But otherwise, I will shut up, and I will leave it there. Thanks, thank you all so much for watching. And as always, enjoy the rest of your day.